Guys that played really well, but but certainly St. St. Brown and golf um, were, were two of the guys that really showed up in a positive way. Um, Branch, Iffy, Kirby, you know, uh, those guys had a lot of production. Uh, Rodrigo on special teams. Um, those were, there's a number of other guys here, but those are the ones that really, you know, um, stood out. Um, but we did a number of things right, and, uh, you know, there, we knew there was going to be nothing easy about that one, but, but, you know, we made the plays when we needed to to win that one on the road. So um, that's good, and now it's on to the next one. Congratulations on the division title, first of all. Um, in the last 48 hours, have you gotten an even better appreciation for how significant this is, the 30 years and the first Tennessee Morris title? And have you gotten much interaction with fans or friends or whatever texting you? Um, I've, well, I've gotten a number of texts, um, you know, which is, that's, that's nice, you know. Um, and I feel like I'm not shocked by anything. Um, I appreciate and I, and I do, um, man, I understand the perspective, even though I haven't lived here for all those years. And so I'm, nothing has caught me off guard. I, I know that this, is, uh, this means a lot to, to a lot of people here. L means a lot to, the, to a number of people in this organization, you know. Uh, look, just uh, Lance Newmark and, and Rob, uh, I mean, you know, they've been here for years, you know, and, and they've been doing a lot of the grunt work and personnel department and to be a part of this, you know, that's special for those guys too. There's a number of guys we can go through here. And then certainly look, the Ford family, you know, I mean, um, I'm just, I'm, I, I'm appreciative of the support they've given us and, and Sheila, I mean, she's, um, like I say, I, I can't say enough great things about her and I'm happy that we could deliver uh, this, this one thing, um, but the, we got more work to do. In the season, strong. You know, these last two, obviously, you got Dallas, you got Minnesota again, but entering the playoffs, these last two games, what does that do? For you? Well, it's important. Um, it's important. You know, we we checked the box on one thing, and now it's it's to the next one, and and so at this point now, we're fighting for the two seed. You know, and look, if if you're able to get to the one, so be it. But right now, what we what we know we can achieve on our own is the two. And uh, that's no easy task. You know, we got to go to Dallas. They haven't lost in I don't know how many games at home. Um, and uh, they play really well there. Uh, it'll be loud, um, you know, but but we're looking forward to it. You know, and I'm I'm looking forward to going out there and playing a really good opponent at their place again. We've done pretty well on the road. We handle it well. Um, and then to go out there and play for Jimmy, too. This would be great, man. Jimmy Johnson. So, <laughs> you know, make it proud. You've been through this as both a coach and a player, clinching a division and, and having time left. So, um, you know, you got to celebrate that and you were in that celebration. But what, what's the challenge as a coach? I didn't celebrate. I was with you guys. <laughs> I didn't say anything to anybody else. That's probably true. Um, <laughs> what, what is the challenge here with, with resetting and refocusing and, and putting the celebration behind you and, and making sure you. That, that, that's, the that's the biggest opponent right now for us. Is, is really the satisfaction, complacency. That, that, that is what we're going to fight from here on out. And they're going to know that. We'll, we'll have a meeting here in a little bit. And we got smart guys. They understand that. Because air, all these questions, no different than, and I understand why you'd ask it and why it is a big story. Because it's been 30 years. But if we continue to talk about it and we answer them and we live in that moment, then we're not getting to the next thing. And it's really no different than what happens to the playoffs. You win a big game in the playoffs, well, you don't have time to really enjoy it. You got to get ready for the next one. And that's where we're at. So it's a great thing. I wish we had more time to enjoy it, but we don't. And, and we're off to the next one and we got to want more. We got to stay hungry or we won't be able to get the next one. Are you direct then in terms of what next is and what the next goal is with these guys? You've been yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, when I talk to them this afternoon, that's that's what it'll be about. You um, took the job. I'm sure you had a timeline that you thought you could, where you're at now. And without giving us away whatever, are you that much farther ahead of the timeline? Is this the timeline you thought or you thought you'd do it soon? No, I mean, I... I Brad and I both felt like we should be competing for, uh, for the division in year three. We felt very comfortable about that. We should have a competitive team, be able to. And, and we knew, we felt like in year two we could do it, but we, we had to do everything right. 
every little thing right. And we, we could, and, and we got off to, you know, a little rough start. We weren't doing every little thing right. And then by the end of the year, we were and playing pretty good football. So, um, but no, I'm not surprised with where we're at at this point. If that, you know, I just, you know, we're competitive and we're playing pretty good football. It's not perfect. We got things to clean up for sure. Um, but, you know, look, I, I can't say enough about ownership. I can't say enough great things about Brad, you know, and I, I just go back to this, uh, you know, we, you know, what is it? Why? How? What? But it's people. It's people. It's people. And, and I know this, if it's one thing when you sit in the locker room and you preach teamwork, but then it doesn't happen everywhere else, it doesn't happen in the personnel department, it doesn't happen to the coaches, it doesn't happen with ownership, then those guys, it's, it doesn't mean anything. It really doesn't, and it, you, you can't sustain. And so we are a team. We're a team. Brad and I are a team. Sheila, we're a team. Chris Spillman, a team. Rod Wood, a team. We're The coaches, a team. The players, a team. We're all in this. And, uh, and I think they know that and feel that. And, and we function as a team, as an organization. Complacency and satisfaction that you talked about, you know, as being the opponent. Um, in any of your losses this year, did you feel that that was an issue? And if so, are there lessons to be learned? Like, you know, we sort of got on our high horse for this game. And it went well, look, I think sometimes, you, you know, when you have a young team, there's, there are, there's things that come with that, you know. And, and it doesn't mean there's a, a lack of want to or anything. It's just, you know, look, in today's age, uh, it's all right there, and it's immediate, right? It's on your phone, it, and and I, I, if you're not careful, you'll get caught up in the good and the bad. And and I just bring this up again: the the, the reality, it's not black or white; it's gray, man. You got to live in the gray and take it for what it is. Because if you, you know, you win, we win a division, and everybody thinks we're all of a sudden we're the best, dude. That you don't know that. What, what you do know is what's on tape. And when things go bad, it's not as bad as everybody says it is. It's just not. Um, so take it for what it is and uh, trust what your eyes see and what you're hearing from people you trust. And the rest of it doesn't matter. Dallas's success at home, I think 15 and one over the last two years, um, that doesn't that venue doesn't get mentioned in the Kansas City or the Seattles of the world. So when you when you look at it, I mean, is there is there a factor that that makes them such a good team at home? Is there something that sets them apart? Uh, I think just I think the comfort, uh, the comfort of of being there and to be able to function, um, you know, particularly offensively, right, without the crowd noise. Um, you know, there's a number of things that they're able to do. Um, I feel like that opens up things they're able to do because because they don't have to be on silent cadence, you know, uh, some of the verbal. Um, I just, you know, I, I think they take full advantage of being home. They do it well. Certainly, they've got plenty of pieces over there. It starts with this quarterback. He's a heck of a player. Um, he's a winner, you know. Uh, he can make all the throws. He's mobile. Um, and he's got weapons, you know. C.D. Lamb, this back is explosive. You know, they got, uh, Cooks has got speed. Uh, this offensive line's pretty good. So, uh, you know, they got a number of things uh, that go well for them. And then, you know, if they're able to, they get off to a really good start when they're at home normally, you know. And really, they got off to a good start the other day out on the road. And then, you know, something bad happens and it just didn't, they couldn't quite overcome it. But, but they get up and then this defense is designed to pin their ears back and they can rush the passer. 11 is as good as they come doing that. Um, and they're pretty aggressive. Dan Quinn's done a great job with their schemes uh, and putting guys in position to make plays. So, you know, I, it's, it goes without saying, you could say it every week, we have to get off to a fast start because that's where this team excels. They get going and all of a sudden uh, it snowballs and, and, and then you just can't make up from the mistakes that you may have had early in the game. What kind of uh, confidence can the defense lean from uh, having the game on the line, making the key play late? A lot. Between that and the turnovers, we talked about getting turnovers and bunches, and there, there we go, you know. Um, and so this has been the one thing that's that we've been missing, and now it showed up, and I feel like it's not going to go anywhere, you know. I feel like uh, those between our safeties and our backers and, and branch, kind of that, man, we, we're, uh, we're becoming very disruptive, and... Uh, you know, we're making a lot of plays. Now, there's some things in there that showed up. And look, 18 is what he is. He's a hell of a receiver. But there's a couple of things we can clean up uh, on the coverage aspect. But as far as, um, 
man, playing your keys, being where you need to be, making plays on the football, man, we're, we're doing that. And uh, I feel like that's here to stay. How well did him just being in two organizations he was with? And I know it's not like college, like where they get put the weakest opponent for homecoming, but they are doing the ring of honor this week. Is yeah, that, awesome. you take offense to that, or is that a, do you take offense to being the opponent for that? Or yeah. you know, okay. no, that's <laughs> awesome. I feel like that was for us. Like I, I, I'm a huge Jimmy Johnson fan. Obviously, grew up in Texas when you know he had the triplets winning Super Bowls, um, and. Um, you know, to do everything that he was able to do. And just, he's somebody that I've studied from afar. Um, and I'm just, I've always been fascinated with him. You know, he's a, so his style, the way he coached, uh, what he was about, the way he built that roster, the way they played, um, you know, and I just, I, I think he's special. I think he's one of these rare special coaches, you know. Um, and so I just think it's, to me, it's like an honor that we get to go out there and, because that's what I think of. Obviously, our team, man, a chance to get a win, but, you know, do something that he'd be proud of. He could watch us play and be like, man, I like that style. You know, I approve of that. Um, so I think it's pretty cool. Do you think you can get out of, like, ruining the Ring of Honor Day and also America's team, all this stuff, like, you know, make quieting that crowd and that, that mythology? Yeah, I don't think we'll have to make a big deal of that. I think it's, look, the environment we were just in was, that was... Uh, you know, that was, that, that was pretty loud. You know, that was, you're talking about Christmas Eve and, uh, you know, they're, they're in the fight there. And uh, so I think that's, that's about as harsh as it gets there too. Now it'll be loud and, and they'll be going at it, but I, I feel like we've handled all that stuff pretty well. So I'm not going to make a huge deal of it. Uh, I might bring up the Jimmy Johnson deal because I respect the hell out of the man, but, um, uh, but, you know, as far as everything else, it's business as usual. You know, we, we worry about what we can worry about, and uh, we just play our ball. We don't get frazzled. Um, you know, pressure goes up, and, and our heart rate levels out. We talk about it all the time. Yeah, there was people in, um, whether it's fans on social media, whether it's people on media and TV, there's been a lot of thoughts about what you should do with the roster, you know, leading up to this point and what you shouldn't do. But you stuck to your guns, and you had faith in your locker room, and you voiced that confidence publicly a lot of times. Just how important was it for you to do that and what is something that you're seeing in those guys that the outside people are not able to see? Um, well, look, you're you're around these guys. You know, I'm around them. Brad and myself both. I mean, you're around them um, more than I am my own family this time of year. And I hate to say that, but it, but it is what it is and it's hard. Um, but it's also, you know, you, you learn a lot about each other and you learn a lot about these guys. And it's, um, you know, I just bring it up. It, it's, you know, you talk about a team. First of all, Brad and I have had a plan from day one and we've stuck to that. And we didn't listen to what anybody else said. We believed in what we believed in and we're staying course with it. Um, but, but on top of that, you know, you, you want what's best for your team. It doesn't mean that you're getting the most talented players. Um, because you can go out and get the most talented player per that position what you need. And if he doesn't mesh with everybody else, it'll blow the whole thing up. It just will. And there'll be a time it doesn't mean you're getting a bunch of choir boys. That's not what we're talking about. Um, but I just know there's a way to do it. And uh, it's got the production and the type of person we bring in, they, they gotta be, they got to be equals. Um, or or Because I've seen it. I've lived it. I've seen it uh, as a player and a coach. And so... Uh, we're just very mindful of that. And how much of an asset is it to have the two running backs you have who could really chew up some yards but have different styles and both can produce at a really high level? Well, that's one of the visions for our offense. It's one of the reasons. It's, it's why we got both of those guys. why we signed Montgomery, and it's why we went and got Gibbs because uh, they both bring a little something different to the table. And, and you just feel like it's another place to give you versatility. You know, there's versatility in the run game, but also in the pass game. Um, and I just, I feel like it's another avenue to open your offense up. It's big. Uh, just a chance maybe to get uh, CJ back this week and, and what that would mean for your defense. And then James Houston, is there a potential maybe you, you start his clock this week? Yeah, there's a chance. Uh, there's a chance we started. Um, you know, I made a comment this morning about it. I don't know. We may, we may wait a week. Um, We'll see where he's at. He's he's close to starting the clock now. CJ, he 
we're just we're going to take it as it comes here. We'll have a walkthrough today, so there's not so much we can do. Um, and then tomorrow will be more of the physical, and we'll, we'll just kind of take it as it comes. You know, certainly if we're able to, he's ready, it, it adds another weapon on defense is what it does, another playmaker. Problem to have with it, if he's playing so well. Obviously, Kirby doing the things just to get another piece. <laughs> trying to find a spot for a player that good. That's a good problem to have week 17. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if, because um, look, if he and Kirby are both playing at a high level, Branch is coming along, you know, play, doing, playing some pretty good football. And so, you know, then you, you begin to, all right, how do we build a couple of packages here? Um, it, it, you know, once you get him in there. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, look, we're, we're going to play the best players, you know, and the guys that give us the best chance to win and put the best on the field uh, that we can that makes sense per what they're doing and their personnel groups. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.